Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how I did this drawing of a cockapoo in pastels. Now this video is going to be packed with lots of tips for drawing soft wavy fur and also the curlier fur on the body when we get to it. Now this fur texture it can be challenging and it definitely relies on how we approach the layering process. But before we get onto that I do like to make sure that I've started off with one of the eyes first. Once I'm happy with that, I've got the shape right, the highlight, the contrast, that's when I'm then going to focus on the fur. Now for this, I did decide to use my pan pastels for my base layer. Now I'm just using an eye makeup applicator tool there to apply that pan pastel pigment. The most important thing at the base layer stage is that you don't want to fill the tooth of the paper. This is really important and it will limit what layers you can put on top. Now ultimately that means of course that we're not going to be able to add any details in the fur if any part of that paper has been filled. So that's something to be very aware of. Once I was happy with my base layer you can also see that it's nice, soft and blended. There are no harsh lines. That's when I start working with my pastel pencils. Now my main consideration when I work with my pencils is I want to focus on three things. Fur direction, fur length and fur thickness. Now this is something that I talk about in every single tutorial, both here on YouTube and my in-depth tutorials on Patreon. The way that we move that pencil, and here is a prime example with the way that it curves in many different ways, this is going to massively affect the type of fur texture that we end up with in our portrait. Now something else when we're working on a fur texture like this, which can really affect the end result, is which section of the fur we draw first. Now I do have this tutorial here on Patreon and I'll put a little photo in the corner. This is available as a full length from start to finish tutorial. You get the reference photo, line art and material list. And there I show you specifically how to layer in the correct order to build up this type of cockapoo fur. Now the reason why this is so important is because the way that the fur overlaps, the way that it can merge into other layers of that fur because of how soft it is, can make it quite challenging to get right. But if you really strip back that reference photo and just focus on the individual layer at one time, you'll find then that it does come together more naturally and easier. Sometimes we can spend more time hesitating, staring at that reference photo with a fur texture like this because we're not quite sure which bit we should be drawing first. And quite often that happens because we're focusing on either the wrong layer or we're working on too much of a larger section. You'll see here that I am working on maybe one or two square inches at one time. Although I've got the top section around the eye blocked in for my base layer, when I come in with my pastel pencils here, I am then breaking that up into even smaller sections. This, I find, helps me to stop becoming overwhelmed by the process, especially with a complex fur texture. If we are feeling a little bit like that, it's usually because we are trying to work on too much of a larger area. Now one thing here when I'm working with my pencils is you can really start to see the importance of contrast. Now this again is something that I focus so much in all of my tutorials because this I feel makes more of a difference to how much of a three-dimensional shape and form our portraits have compared to worrying about the exact colour. You can see that I've got my highlights in that fur nice and bright but I've also got the shadows around the eyes here on the nose nice and dark. The only way to build up that depth within the fur is to get our layers and our contrast right. If our darks are more of a mid-tone and our highlights are dull, the fur will not look like it's layered up and three-dimensional. You want it to look like it's sat on top of that animal's skull structure and all of those muscles under the skin. So in order to build up that, we must pay attention to our lights and our darks. Now that isn't just when we're drawing fur. Have a look at the nose there where I've got the highlight positioned on the top section and then the tiny little curved highlights on the bottom of the nostrils. Both of those are placed very carefully in the right position to make sure that I've captured the right three-dimensional shape of that nose. If the highlights and the shadows are in the wrong place, you then end up changing the form of that animal. So you can see here that for the base layer stage, I still pay very close attention to where I'm mapping in my lights and my darks. 
I never put one solid colour down for my base layer because I think then we have a tendency to drift away from our reference photo. So if I'm mapping in my lights and my darks at this stage, I feel that I'm able to achieve more realism quicker. Now that in turn means that I am also, again, more motivated to carry on with this piece. Because even at this stage here, if I decided to stop drawing after this um, session here, it already looks like that reference photo. I can start to see this pet come into life. And that's all because I've made sure that I'm paying real close attention to that reference photo, the lights and the darks. Now one thing and one question that I'm asked quite a lot is how do I know which colour to select based on the area of fur that I'm working on? Now this is a great question and I do cover this in my Patreon tutorials because they're in real time, they're step by step, um, I'm able to explain why I'm selecting a pencil, why that colour should be mixed with another and so on. But the most important thing here is whether or not that colour is a light or a dark version of that colour and also whether or not it is a warm and a cool colour. Now there are a lot of oranges and pinks, lots of warm browns that have gone into this fur colour. But you may have a cockapoo where it's under a little bit more of an overcast day and you might need to use your purples which are on the cooler end of the colour wheel. So the way that I select my colours, it's not complex. It doesn't go into any real complex colour theory or anything like that. So if you would like to see how I break that down and simplify the process, then all of that is available on my Patreon channel. And I will link that in the description below if my slower in-depth tutorials are of interest. Now before I work on the complexity of the ears and the chest fur, if this video has been useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give the video a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. I'd be really, really grateful. I also upload two to three videos to YouTube every week. So if you would like to get notified of that content, then hit the subscribe and the bell button. Now again, when it comes to working on areas like the ears, I would also approach this in the same way if I was working on a spaniel ear. You want to focus on your shapes, your main lights and darks. Now again, this is something that I've spoken a lot about throughout this tutorial because it's the easiest way of breaking up that reference photo. If you map in the shapes of your lights and your darks, you're naturally automatically now starting to form that softer flow of that fur texture. Once you've got that in place, it's far easier for our brain to process that reference photo. And before we know it, we're starting to build up our numerous layers as I am here without it becoming too stressful. So once I've worked on one ear and I've got that about 70, 80% complete, that's when I'll move on to the next. Now I always say that I get an area almost completed and then I'll move on because there are always going to be changes, little tweaks, little details that need to be added, but I do find that they're easier to judge once you've got the entire uh, drawing done. So this is something that I will always go back to and reinforce. So for instance, if you need to darken your shadows or add some more highlights, that's something that can make a real difference to the end portrait, but they are easier to judge when you're looking at your entire drawing. Now because of the way that this dog had his head turned, you can see more of this ear than you can the other. So again, I had to make sure that I'm studying the way that the fur moves, it curves. Going back to those three things that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, fur length, fur direction and fur thickness. All of these things are gonna play a really important role. Now in terms of those three aspects with that pencil technique, it's gonna depend on a lot of things how sharp your pencil is, where you're holding it on that pencil, and how much pressure you're applying on the pencil. These three things make a real difference. Now, depending on the fur texture, I will be using different sharpness of leads. I'll be applying different sorts of pressure. And again, I cover all of this in my Patreon tutorials. Now, going back to the selection of specific colors. Now you could have five photographs of the animal that you've been asked to draw and the colour of the fur in every photograph will be slightly different. This is because the time of day, whether or not a flash was used, was the animal indoors or were they taken outside, all of these things are going to massively impact the colour that is captured in that photograph. So this is why I want to go for as close as I can for the colour, but it's the contrast that I'm focusing more on. 
Here, this is a prime example. So this is very, very dark underneath this chin, really dark. But I've had to make it that dark in order to make the face look further forward and set that chest slightly further back. You've also got a shadow that's being cast from the ears and the chin itself. So all of these things play a really important role with how much of a three-dimensional shape the end portrait will have. Once I've got my good base foundation in place, that's only when I start focusing on the fur texture that's closer to the skin. I then want to build up my values from there and gradually building up more of that softer fur texture. Now this is where the fur direction changes quite a lot. Because of the way that the curls are formed on the body in comparison to the face or the ears, they're a lot tighter curls and they're more condensed and closer together. So here I do just want to focus on one or two square inches at a time. And a really big tip for something like this is just draw what you see. Sometimes it's really easy to try and over analyse what we're looking at in the reference photo. With curly fur like this, sometimes the curls are going to go in the opposite direction and we'll sometimes think, well, why is that the case? It's just because it's the way that that fur texture is formed. If you see a curl curving over towards the left side, but the one next to it curves over to the right side, draw what you see there. Because at the end result, your portrait will then resemble that reference photo and more importantly, that fur texture will be more accurate. We don't want to be drawing random pencil strokes for the sake of it, but certainly really studying with curly fur which direction those curls are generally travelling in is going to make so much extra detail and depth to that section of the fur. So I really do hope the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video have been useful. As I say, I would really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference. And if you are interested in any of my in-depth tutorials on Patreon, I will link my Patreon in the description below. Along with my website, which has a Patreon library there, it has all of my tutorials listed so you can see exactly what content I have on Patreon before you sign up. Now, the wonderful thing about Patreon is it's really flexible, so you can stay for as long as you like or you can cancel at any time. And as I say, if you've got any questions about Patreon or any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube next week. But as always, thank you so much for watching.